Hi there. I can hardly see you behind all these beautiful orchids. In this video, we're going to talk about how to flower orchids. But before I get into that, let me introduce you to some of my friends here. This one's done particularly well this year. It's got two main branches and about seven side branches, and it's been flowering for two months now, I think. Some of the old flowers are starting to die off, and the new ones are coming. It's doing really well this year. This is another real beauty. I love the color on this one. Now, it's been flowering for quite a long time. This was full of flowers up here, and they've now fallen off. And new buds are coming at the tip. So I imagine this will flower for another four months, I think. It's a pretty big plant. It's got lots of leaves. And in fact, it had two flower stems and I cut one off because I know this plant makes really big stems and it, two were just going to be too much. The flowers were going to get too congested. So cut one off, ended up with this one. This is a very interesting orchid. Again, it has two stems, lots of side branches. This is a peloric flower. A normal orchid flower has three sepals. These are the back pieces. Then it has two large petals here with a lip. But in a peloric flower, the lip and the two petals all look the same. So what I have is three lips and the three sepals at the back. That's quite unusual and it's a very unusual color too. But you grow this orchid just like all the others. Here's the last one I want to show you. It's just starting to open. This is a beautiful one. Smaller flowers, lots of buds, two stems, maybe five side branches. One of my favorite orchids. All right, so how do you get these guys to flower? That's a very common question, but it's the wrong question to ask. Orchids are very easy to flower. The question you really want to ask is, how do I grow a really healthy orchid? Because if you do that, flowering is automatic. You don't have to do anything extra to get it to flower. So step one is to grow a good plant. That means to learn how to water it correctly, fertilize it correctly, put it in the right kind of media, give it a pot that's the right size. And if you do all of that right, and you give it good light, they will flower. You don't have to do anything extra. My Phalaenopsis flower every year, and I don't do anything special to get them to flower. I've made several videos that explain how to take care of these orchids. And at the end of this video, there'll be a link to that library of videos. Just follow the advice I give you and you will get flowers. But let's say you have a plant that's doing all right and you think it should flower and it just isn't. What can you do to improve the flowering? Probably the number one reason homeowners don't get a lot of flowers on their plants is because they don't give them enough light. Orchids like a lot of light. Now these Phalaenopsis are considered low light orchids, but a low light orchid still means it gets more light than most of your other house plants. So if you have a plant and it seems to be healthy and it's making leaves, but you never see flowers, try to give it more light. My plants go outside in a shady area in the summer, and that gives them a really good light all summer long, and then they burst into flower in the fall. Number one, give them lots of good light. If you're growing under fluorescent lights, they're pretty hard to flower unless you get the lights right down on the leaves. If you bought a new orchid and you just brought it home, don't put it in a sunny window right away. Condition it slowly. So give it a bit of light, a couple days later, give it a little bit more. A couple days later, a little bit more. The ones in the store when you buy out them haven't seen light for a while and you want to recondition them. If you give it too much light too quick, you will burn the leaves. The second thing to look at is temperature. Phalaenopsis are warm growing plants and your house temperature is just about right for them. But if you can give them a little bit of a cool spell in the fall, that may help flower. So as I mentioned, mine go outside for the summer and then the fall comes along and I leave them out there so that they get a cooling off period. Now they can't take frost, but they do like cooler nighttime temperatures. So in September around here, they're getting that nice warm days, cool nights, warm days, cool nights. That cycling and that lower temperature helps initiate the flower step. 
in the home, what you can do is put them near a window. And then in the fall, that air next to the window cools down more than the rest of the room. And so they'll get a bit of cold exposure. Or maybe you can put them into the mudroom or in the basement. Somewhere it gets a little cooler overnight. But make sure you give them lots of light during the day. Well, what about fertilizer? I mean, I see all kinds of things about fertilizer. Some people fertilize heavy when they want flowers. Other people say, don't fertilize them. Cut off the fertilizer and that will stress the plant and make it flower. I don't know if either of those work. I fertilize the same every time. In fact, every time I water my orchids, which is about once a week or maybe every 10 days, they get fertilizer all year long. I don't care if they're flowering or finished flowering or they're in full bloom, they still get the same fertilizer. These orchids are either making leaves or they're making flowers. And for both of those, they need nutrients. So just give them a good level of fertilizer. Now, there are a lot of other fertilizer myths running around with orchids. You might have heard the saying, feed them weekly, weekly. What that means is don't feed them very often. And when you feed them, use about one quarter of what it says on the bottle. Although that's very common advice, it's the wrong advice. I've recently spent some time looking at the scientific studies of these plants and looking at the fertilizer that grows really good plants. And this is for commercial greenhouses, so they know what they're doing. And what they find is that higher levels of fertilizer grow faster plants that flower much better. Now I have a video on orchid fertilizer myths, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this one. The last thing to consider is the watering. And again, some people will tell you, well, stop watering them, let them dry out more. That stress will cause flower buds. I don't know if that's true. It, it might be because some plants, when they're stressed, they do flower more. But I water mine the same all year long. Again, I want healthy plants. I don't want leaves that aren't getting enough water. And if the orchid does start making that flower spike, it needs all of that water to make the flower buds. I don't stress my plants with water. Now, on the other hand, I don't overwater either. And as a general rule, my pots are pretty dry by the time I water. So I water well, then I leave the plants alone for a week to 10 days, and by then they're pretty dry, and then I water again. So my orchids get a dry period every week and a half. Now I have a video about watering orchids too, and that will be in the playlist at the end of this one. All right, to sum it up, what is the secret to flowering orchids? Start by growing good orchids. The leaves on these Phalaenopsis should be a medium green. If they're really dark green, they're not getting enough light. In fact, when I put these outside for the summer, the leaves go almost yellow. Now you don't want to see any black spots because that's sunburn, but a light yellow green leaf just shows that it's got lots of light and then they grow really well. But I find that if you take care of the orchids and focus on the right cultural conditions, they flower automatically every fall. And I suspect it's that cooling down in the fall, or it's because in the fall, the day length gets shorter, or maybe it's a combination of those two things. But fowls tend to bloom in the fall, just before Christmas, and then they'll bloom right through the spring and early summer. And sometimes I have these guys blooming 12 months of the year. But after about six months, I usually cut the flower spike off because quite frankly, I'm tired of them. I don't want to see the same flowers 12 months out of the year. And it gives the plant a rest. So I'm taking care of the plant by cutting off that spike. So if you're having trouble flowering your orchids, have a look at my videos and follow my advice. My method of growing orchids is actually very simple. I don't put a lot of work into it, but I don't overwater. I repot every two years and I try to give them a good source of light. If you do that, you'll have flowers.